say thank you to the many Macedonia residents who have emailed or spoken to me stopping the store and have uh, spoken to me personally about their outrage at the personal attacks and censure visited on me by the city council majority at our last meeting. Uh, your outrage about the ambush method of that censure and your personal gratitude for my continued service as a Macedonia council member are truly appreciated. Second, I want to describe what I believe the Macedonia Council members' oath and duties are. As a Macedonia Council member at large, my focus is on representing the residents. The residents are my true teammates, quote unquote, and their interests come first. The words in the logo describing a prominent retail company's approach to its customers say it best. What matters to you matters to us. And to paraphrase that, as a council member, what matters to the residents matters to me. As a council member, you have elected me to work hard, ask the hard questions, and make sure the city responds to your concerns as residents. I've certainly devoted my efforts to accomplishing that mission on your behalf. Council members are not elected to agree with each other or to, quote, go along to get along, as a famous former speaker of the House, Sam Rayburn, said. Council members are elected to contribute an independent view and thoughts to that, so that Macedonians can be assured there is not a rubber stamp of, of the administration and its actions and that the best outcome for the residents is achieved. Third, I work with other council members and administration as professional colleagues who are in service to Macedonia residents, not personal friends. Their interests are considered, but their interests are secondary to the interests of Macedonia residents. Uh, I am not looking backward to the past election or holding a grudge. As I've already noted, I am working for the residents, and that's my focus. Since the November election, I have voted with the new administration on replacing the finance director and city engineer, and voted against retaining the Deemer firm as a law department. I have done so based on what I believe is best for Macedonian residents. Because I'm committed to transparency, I alerted Macedonia residents to the mayor's plan to retroactively raise income taxes without a vote of the people. The mayor and certain council members took umbrage to that, but I know you want to know what is going on, especially the things that are vital to your pocketbook. Fourth, I want to address the specific accusations <coughs> of the center complaint. I did consult our existing finance director in the fall of 2014 about the 2015 budget because I wanted to be certain that I placed funds in the right appropriation lines. The objective was to satisfy the administration's desire to have road repair bids out early in FY 2015 so we would get the best price, value price for Macedonia residents. I asked for input from the department heads and that was received. The budget appropriations were completed in December 2014, and the mission was accomplished. The mayor's failure to follow the Macedonia Charter and restore our finance director to full-time duty made this work much more difficult and onerous than it needed to be. I am not complaining, but there was a lot of extra work for me because of that. The council majority felt it was important to our residents to get the road bids out, and Mr. Angle and Mrs. Darrow thanked me for this effort. To ignore that reality and censure me ex post facto is a violation of the U.S. Constitution and shows a backward-looking attitude. I did discuss the Plot Arthur's case which, uh, with the city of Macedonia's insurance company attorney. That was not improper or illegal. I did so because our city law director and his assistant law director were named as defendants in the case early on in the litigation phase March of 2014, that is, and I wanted to hear from an attorney working for our city whose opinion was not biased by being a named defendant in the case. I simply asked our insurance attorney for explanations or clarifications of the judge's rulings. As a council member, I was not only concerned about bias, but the cost of taxpayers. This case ending up, ended up costing the Macedonia taxpayers uh, approximately $170,000. Over 85% of this cost was for the Macedonia Law Director's billing. 
when it could have been settled for 60,000 or less in the early stages. The federal judge in this case later ruled that our law director and his firm were disqualified because of potential conflict of interest on their stat because of their status as defendants. The case has finally been settled in March 2016, you just heard it tonight, after almost three years of litigation. This settlement is a good thing, but in my opinion, over 170,000 spent on road repair rather than on this case would have been vastly greater beneficial to our residents. As a footnote, I was deposed in the Farnhurst case under subpoena and told the truth about what I witnessed as a resident attending city meetings in 2012. My role was minor and I had zero to do with the settlement of this case. Council members are elected to contribute that independent view and we have done so. Uh, let me just say to summarize, I am only concerned about the residents' interest and cost of that case and nothing inappropriate was done in the story. Finally, and I have to discuss this because Apparently, this keeps coming up like whack-a-mole. This center complaint repeats a false report concerning my visit to Summit Point, owned by Capital Senior Living, on November 2nd, 2016, that were apparently originated with their local facility executive director. I was accompanied by a friend and witness the entire time was at Summit Point, which was about 35 minutes, and none of the allegations about my visit there are true. The statement that I did not go to the front desk on arrival is false. In fact, I did go to the front desk upon arrival and asked to talk to the activities director about a left home over Halloween candy donation that I had with me. I was told the, uh, by the activity, that the activities director was on a shopping trip and would return shortly. The statement that I entered the Alzheimer's residence block area is false. I did not enter any lot portion of the Summit Point facility during my visit. While I was waiting for the activities director to return, I walked down the first floor hallway and visited with a number of friends, resident assistants, and nurses that I knew because my mother was a resident at some point for several years. So I know many people over there, and many of them are friends. My friend and I left after accounting the local facility director while visiting with some friends in the assisted living activities room uh, this woman, uh, who was the executive director, informed me that I could, could not quote-unquote campaign in the facility. I wasn't even doing that anyway, just chatting with people I knew. And I questioned her as to why the mayor and other council members had been permitted to campaign in the facility. And just as a parenthetical, I should explain that I know this director because she was the facilities director at the in the final year before my mom passed away in 2013. When Summit Point accidentally discarded some of my mother's furniture during her final illness, <coughs> I went to her and asked her to reimburse my family for the loss. She refused and I was forced to go to a senior national operations director in that owner company to get that matter resolved. I subsequently received a reimbursement and a letter of apology from the company. I think it is fair to say that the local facility director was un unhappy about that and her attitude toward me was effective. My friend and I did leave Summit Point without incident shortly after encountering this local facility director. An hour and a half later, while I was campaigning in Macedonia, not in the Summit Point, a friend called me to tell me that a police call card concerning my visit to Summit Point had appeared on the Facebook page of a local Migorinian Molnar campaign supporter. I told this friend that I had not been contacted by the police, that I knew nothing about any police visit to Summit Point, and what was said on the call card, as described to me, was false. The friend who was with me at Summit Point subsequently called and emailed Chief Golden to tell him that she was with me the entire time, and the call card report by Summit Point was false. The chief informed her, her on email that no changes are made to call cards, so the call card could not be corrected. I followed up with the police to find out how the police call card ended up on this supporter's Facebook page almost instantly. I had figured the police department's raw call card reports do not show up on Facebook pages without a city employee being involved. I did not receive an explanation. 
Let me reiterate, I was not asked to confirm any of these statements made in the Central Report on some of point allegations. To have these lies repeated without any chance at refutation is a reflection of the haste of the council majority and the mayor to condemn me without discussion. And finally, and lastly, I believe this council needs to move on from conflict and revenge and refocus on the residents' interests and concerns. I pledge to do that and appeal to others to do the same. That's my statement. Thank you, and I'm going to offer this to the clerk and have that recorded as part of the record. The only thing I would like to say.